Welcome to the And She Looked Up Creative Hour podcast. I'm your host, Melissa Hartfield, and I'm an artist and an entrepreneur. And yes, those two things can go together. This podcast is for the artists, the creatives, and the makers who want to find a way to make a living doing what they love. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Angie Looked Up Creative Hour. As always, I'm your host, Melissa, and today's episode is kind of an off-the-cuff um, episode that I wasn't planning on recording, but today is January 31st, and that means it is the start of the 100-day project, which caught me a little off guard because it normally starts later in the year. But for some reason this year, they've chosen January 31st as the start day, which I kind of like because it means you're done before summer starts. And I just thought it would be really fun to have a chat about how doing projects like this, whether it's a 30-day project, a 100-day project, or a 365 project, can really have a huge impact not only on your creativity, but on your skills and also your ability to develop your creative eye. Plus, they're just a lot of fun. So I thought this would be a fun thing to do for a rainy Sunday morning here in Vancouver, which is a pretty normal thing for us here in January, February, March, (laughs) even April. (laughs) And so today I thought we'd talk a little bit about what a 100-day project can do for you. So I'm not sure when the 100-day project started It's been going for at least five or six years because that's how long I've been doing it. And it was started by an artist by the name of L. Luna. And in recent years, she has passed it on to another creative who goes by the name of Lindsay Jean Thompson. You can find her on Instagram. It's changed a lot. When it first started, it was a very grassroots movement. But as time has gone on, there have been a number of additional pieces to it, like 100 day planners and 100 day prompt lists and all kinds of things that you can purchase. And you don't need to do any of that. All you need to do is just decide that you are going to create for 100 days or 30 days or 50 days or 365 days. Um, You can start at any time. You don't have to start on day one. A lot of people don't. It's just when you decide that this is something that you want to do. It is kind of fun to do it, to go along with the project as a whole, because there is a very active community on Instagram that, that follows it and that you can interact with and who will interact with you. If you use the hashtag, it's a great way to grow your network and find creatives in your niche or creatives in niches you didn't even know existed. <laughs> so the whole principle behind the 100 day project is, is basically what it sounds like. You're going to create something for 100 days in a row. And where a 100 day project is a little different than so many of the other challenges that are out there is that the key to this is that you have to publicly share your work. And this might be sound really scary. It was very scary for me when I first did it. But it has so many benefits because it really forces you to get past the whole perfectionism and fear of putting yourself out there, fear that your work isn't good enough. Because guess what? It's not going to be good enough. (laughs) The whole point behind the 100 Day Project is to improve in something. So when you start out, it's not going to be what you see in your head. But you're probably the only person who's going to know that when you get it onto the paper or onto the screen or however you're going to create for 100 days. Don't be afraid to share. I I was terrified when I did it. I put a lot of stuff out there that I really, really just made me want to cringe. But you know what? People loved it. And looking back on it, it still makes me want to (laughs) cringe. But people just loved that I was putting things out there and that I was sharing my work. And that's really important in our world. I think it's really important. I think we underestimate how important it is to just give people a way to emotionally connect with us. And that's what creating does. It's an emotional connection. It's not just something that's pretty. It's you putting a piece of your emotional self out there and people connect to that with their emotional selves. So getting past that hurdle of putting your putting your work out there is is worth it. 
it is so worth it. The benefits that are going to come out of it, you can't even imagine until you do it. So what can you create for 100 days? You can create whatever you like. Um, A lot of people focus on visual mediums because you are sharing to Instagram, but it doesn't have to be a visual medium. You could do drawings, paintings, photography, collages, hand lettering, embroidery, but you can also do things like podcasts, video shorts, recipe creations, jewelry design, sewing projects, music. There's so many different things you can do and the sky is the limit. Anything that you want to work on getting better at or that you would like to produce more of, this is your opportunity. It doesn't have to focus necessarily around, what's the word I'm looking for? It doesn't necessarily have to focus around um, an art form. Your challenge could also be dedicated to getting better at using a specific tool or a specific software. So you could be doing something like 100 days with my macro lens or 100 days of creating vector illustrations in Adobe Illustrator, or 100 days of editing video shorts in Final Cut Pro, or 100 days of using your serger, or your Cricut, or your silhouette. Um, that's That's a great way to use a project like this because it really forces you to start learning the ins and outs of these very important tools in our creative process. It could also be focusing on a new medium. So um, maybe you're somebody who normally paints with acrylics and you're going to do 100 days of watercolors. Or um, one of the ones that I did was 100 days of working with Copic markers when I first started using Copic markers to create. Um, It could be 100 days of glass beadwork. Maybe you're a jewelry designer who normally works with metals, but you're going to spend 100 days learning how to work with glass beads. Maybe you're a sewer and you're going to start using silk fabric. So it's 100 days of silk fabric projects. There's, that's a really great way to start building up that muscle memory that comes with learning a new, new software or a new medium. And it's so important for us in order to be able to create and bring to life the visions that are in our head. We need to be able to use the tools that allow us to get those things out. And that's the key (laughs) from being creative to being an artist. A creative person can have all the visions in their head, but an artist is somebody who has learned how to use the tools that let them get those visions out. Whether it's a pencil, whether it's a microphone, (laughs) whether it's a camera, all those tools, we need to learn how to use them in order to be able to do what we do. So, As I said before, this doesn't have to be a 100-day project. My very first thing-a-day project (laughs) was a photography project, and it was um, the 365-day challenge that I did back in, I want to say 2004 or 2005, I can't remember exactly, where I embarked on a a photo-a-day project for a year. Hands down, the best thing I ever did for my photography. It really forced me to learn how to use all the different settings on my camera, which it was my first digital camera. It really forced me to learn more about composition, which is something that just happens. It forced me to start thinking about what I wanted to do. One of the interesting things about doing a project for a year is that after the first 30 days, you feel like you've run out of things to photograph. It's like, okay, I photographed my breakfast, I photographed my desk, (laughs) I photographed stuff I saw on my walk today, I photographed things I saw on the bus, whatever. And then you're kind of like, well, what am I going to do now? And you start to push yourself. You start to look for those interesting things that would make a really good photograph and you start to see the world differently. And that's one of the benefits of doing a project like this. You really develop your eye So all of a sudden you notice that shadow or that stream of light or that color composition or the lines of something and it becomes a photograph. And even at that point, you start to think, well, I really like the way this looks, but I'd like to be able to learn how to make that 
blurry background in a photo. So how do I do that? So then you start learning new techniques. And that's, that's where doing something for a year can be really, really helpful because it is a long time <laughs> to do a project and you do really start to run out of things to think about. I started doing things where I would theme my weeks. So I would have a week where I would only photograph red things. So all of a sudden I started to notice things that were red. And then I would only photograph things that were in black and white. So I started to work on my black and white photography. So there's just so many different ways that you start to push yourself creatively, mentally, and even physically in some instances. But you can also do a 30-day challenge. There's nothing wrong with that. Like, let's say um, one of the things I'm really struggling with right now is foliage, drawing foliage. My foliage just always looks stiff and awkward. And I've been thinking about doing just 30 days of drawing leaves. I just want to get better at drawing leaves. And that might be a way that I can sort of loosen up and get better at catching the light and the lines and the shading. Um, I have a, a really hard time coloring leaves as well, getting the shading correct and making it look like it can, like it has movement. <laughs> I'm not good at that. So, um, but I love drawing flowers and vegetables and plants. All of those things have leaves attached to them. So, so I'd like to get better at doing leaves. You can, you can pick a short one. You can pick a long one. It doesn't matter. As I said, the 100 day project is just one version of all the different ways that you can do a, an activity a day, I guess. <laughs> the 100 day project is one that has a lot of um, community around it, which makes it really nice because um, you can connect with other people. Doing a project like this does take some stamina and a lot of consistency. And there is a point where people tend to start to drop off. Um, I think there's an early point where that happens, probably around the 14 day mark. And then there's another point sort of in the middle <laughs> where people start to fall away from the project. And it can be really difficult. As, as many as I have done, I have not finished all of them. I think out of the five that I've done, I've finished three. Um, and even the three that I finished, I did miss a few days in here and there. There's just times where, you know what, you miss, you miss a day um, often the previous dates of the project coincided with periods of time where I had to travel a lot for work. And so they just, there was just times where there was just so much going on. I just didn't, I just didn't have time or I'd get back to my hotel and I'd just be too exhausted to pick up my pen. I, I still made an effort and I have done very long trips where I have packed up all my Copic markers or my sketchbooks or my tools and I've taken them with me and I've done what I could on those days might not be the quality that I was hoping for, but I still got it done. And that's really important. That's, that's important to try and do it as frequently as you can. Having said that, there are ways that you can set yourself up to succeed. And I'm going to go through some of those right now. One of the most important ones I have learned over the course of doing the project is keep it simple and keep it finishable. <laughs> That's not a word, but you know what I mean. I think one of the reasons a lot of people drop off is because they pick something that is uh, just either too time consuming or too big and they just can't get to it every day. So the very first 100 day project I did and that I finished, I did 10 minute doodles and I set a timer. My doodles had to be done in 10 minutes and I did them on very small pieces of cardstock. I did them on Strathmore artist tiles, the four inch by four inch tiles. So they were very small, um, so I couldn't get carried away with the size. And I had 10 minutes, I had 10 minutes on the clock and I used Faber-Castell pit markers because that was what I had at the time and they traveled very well. I could just put them in a little baggie, a little um, pouch in my carry-on bag and the art tiles also traveled really nice instead of having to haul a big sketchbook around. If I was going to be away for 10 days, I would just take 10 little art tiles and they would just slide into a, um, a notebook or a binder or even into my marker pouch. So it was really portable. That made it super easy for me. And because my time limit was 10 minutes, I had to be done in 10 minutes. I wasn't, it wasn't something that um, turned into, you know, hours of my time. So that was really important. And 
the years where I have not had as much success with the project are the years where I have been far more ambitious with what I wanted to do and uh, just simply really struggle to finish each mini project because that's what each individual day is like. Each individual day is like a little mini project that you want to complete because you have to share it. The two that I did not finish were one, I decided I was going to design and draw seed packets and I simply could not get a seed packet done in a day in the way that I wanted to. And so my seed packets wound up taking like a week each. And so because they were taking so long, there was days that I would miss them and yeah, it just didn't work. And the other one that um, I did not finish was I decided to do draw houses, draw and, and, and color in houses with Copic markers, which was very new for me. I was not, architectural drawing is a, is a real struggle for me. And uh, yeah, again, I could not finish a house, a single house in a day. So it, I, I really realized that for me, the sweet spot for my schedule and for what I can commit to really is like that 10 to 15 minute window where I can sneak a few minutes and sit down and do my mini project for the day. So I really recommend keep it finish simple, keep it finishable. You also want to pick a theme. This is, this is also key because if you're a creative, you know, particularly if you work with clients and a client says, I don't care what you do, just you have a blank slate. You, it, it's up to you. Do you know how hard that is as an artist when somebody says, it's up to you. I trust you. You have full control to sit there and go, oh my God, what am I going to draw? What am I going to write? What am I going to say? <laughs> we, we all work much better with some kind of constraint around us and a theme is a good constraint. So like I said, it could be um, drawing weaves, <laughs> working with the color red. It could be only using this kind of paper. It could be something that you have to finish in 10 minutes. As I mentioned earlier, it could be a specific technique or a specific topic or limit your materials. All of those things will help you stay focused and take some of the thought out of it. Um, because you know that you're going to sit down every day and you're going to use the same set of markers or you're going to use the same color or you're going to use the same wool or maybe you're writing haikus and you're going to, you know, you know, it's your three lines that you have to write every day. Uh, and you can give yourself a lot of creative freedom within those constraints, but putting some, choosing some kind of theme or something to focus you and your, what you're working on, because you're also trying to build a skill set at the same time. Um, so yeah, this is a great way to kind of keep yourself on track. Um, if you have to get up every morning and think of something new to do today, your brain is just going to be like, I don't have time for this and move on. My third tip to succeeding is pick a time that you're going to work on this. I found for me that first thing in the morning is the best time to do it because then it's done. And it gives me a sense of accomplishment first thing in the day. I got something off my checklist. I've got my little mini project for the day done. I've put it out there and it's time to move on. That's so much better than realizing at 1030 at night that you haven't done, <laughs> you haven't done whatever it is that you've signed up to do and you scramble around and you wind up doing something really half-assed. So pick a time to work on it. Try and stick with it. Obviously things come up, you can be flexible, but really try to focus on that same time every day. It doesn't have to be morning. It could be right before you go to bed. It could be on your lunch break. It could be when you drop your kids off to school or sorry, when you pick your kids up at school, if your kids are going to school right now, maybe you sit in the car with your sketchbook for five minutes before the bell rings, get yourself there a few minutes early, do your little sketch for the day and you're done. So find those little pockets of time and that's where keeping it really simple helps as well because if it's something that you can do in 10 or 15 minutes, then you're far more likely to be able to find a pocket of time where you can do it. Tip number four, don't censor yourself and don't aim for perfection. This is just going to cause you so many issues. This is one of the benefits of doing a project like this is that in order to get this kind of workout every single day, you have to forget about it being perfect. By doing 10 minute doodles, I'm on a clock. When the timer goes, I'm done. Doesn't matter if I like it or not, it's done. <laughs> it's done. 
and I have to move on to something else. So don't censor yourself. Don't aim for perfection. The purpose here is to improve your craft and get better in small increments. It's not to be perfect. Um, and I know that's really hard for so many of us. It's It was really hard for me the first two years that I did this. And then it got easier. It got easier the first year as I went along, but it's it's still really, really hard. And there's there's always going to be a handful of things that you do that just feel horrible to you. They just, putting them out there is just going to make you want to just run away and hide and cringe. And, but you know what? It's okay. Just put it out there and just say, you know what? I created this today and I don't like it. It's okay to say that. It's okay to admit that this is not what you wanted it to be. But the flip side of that is you also have to celebrate the ones that you are happy with. If you, if you create something and you put it out there and it's something that you're really happy with, say that. You know what? Today I drew this leaf and for the first time I feel like I could see it moving in the wind. Or for the first time I feel like I got the shading almost there. I'm, I'm really happy with this how this turned out. It's not bragging. <laughs> it's just talking about how you feel about it. And there's going to be days where you feel good and there's going to be days where you feel really bad about what you've created. The other thing to realize is that most people don't care. <laughs> you might think it's terrible, but chances are somebody else out there is going to really love what you do. And this was, this is what I realized when I started putting my doodles out there. The first year they were just random doodles. The second year they were actually, I created a character. Her name's Miss Doodle. I still use her today. Um, and she became the focus of all the doodles. And some of those doodles, I mean, she's a stick figure. So let's be really clear here. I'm not doing amazing life drawings. I'm drawing a stick figure with red hair. And what I realized as I got about a third of the way through my 100 days with Miss Doodle is that people didn't care that she was a stick figure. People didn't care that some of the doodles were absolutely awful. They just liked her. They thought she was fun. They enjoyed, she brightened their day. She made them smile. She made them have a little happy moment in their day. And all of a sudden, I realized that was it. Like, that was my big realization. It's not whether the drawing is perfect. It's about how the drawing makes people feel. And in my case, it made people feel really happy. And that made me happy. And all of a sudden, my huge fears and insecurities about putting myself up out there, they didn't evaporate, but they certainly became much less oppressive <laughs> because I knew people were enjoying it and people will enjoy your art not everyone's going to enjoy your art because that's statistically impossible <laughs> so, you know my mom used to say that statistics can be of great comfort at times and that's just something to remember is that whatever you put out there there's no way that everybody's going to like it because it's just not possible Forget about the people who don't like it and focus on the people who do like it. Focus on the people who enjoy it, whether it makes them happy, whether it makes them feel emotions that they didn't expect to feel. However, if they emotionally connect with it, that's great. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter because you're not doing this for them. You're doing it for you. You are doing this to get better at what you do. It's just a side benefit that other people are going to enjoy it. Another tip that I have, this isn't so much on succeeding, but it is something that did help me. And that is don't be afraid to go macro in your project. And by that, I mean, don't be afraid to dive in and focus on really small details instead of broad strokes. So your project might be something like focusing in on facial expressions or focusing in on shooting macro photography uh, flow <laughs> shooting macro floral photography it could be examining all the different hues of a specific color that you love maybe everything you do in your project is going to focus on a particular shade of red and all the variation or not a particular shade of red but on red and you're going to use all the different shades and hues of red and sort of explore the color that's another way to look at it so those are some quick tips on how you can succeed. I also just want to talk a little bit about the benefits of doing a project like this because there's so many of them. The biggest one is that you're improving your skills day by day. 
And not only are you improving your skills, but you're creating a visual or an audio record of that improvement. And that is so critical. It's so easy for us to think that we're not getting anywhere with our art. But when you can look back and see how much you've improved in only 50 days and then 100 days, it's incredibly encouraging and it really helps build your creative confidence. I guarantee you that on day 50, when you look back at the first week, you're going to be like, wow, even stuff you thought was good that first week, all of a sudden you're going to be like, wow, it's changed so much, like in just 50 days. And then again, at the 100 day mark, you're going to see even more improvement and even more change. And you're going to develop not just your skills, but you're going to develop a style. Even with my Miss Doodle stick figure, if I go back and look at those very first Miss Doodles and the Miss Doodles that I create now, it's almost like a different character. And she's a stick figure. (laughs) So you can imagine um, the improvement. Another project that I did um, was food illustration using Copic markers. That was the year that I decided to learn how to use my Copics. And I really wanted to try my hand at food illustration. And I still have every single one of my drawings. I did 26 of them. So I didn't complete one a day, um, but I did work on them every day. And they're the letters of the alphabet. So A is for apple, B is for banana type of thing. I still have them in my studio. And when I look back at those very first ones, and I look back at the very last ones, so X, Y, Z, the difference is staggering. And it's just from 100 days of learning. You know, my blending got better. My actual drawing, my actual illustration got better. But my ability to blend with my Copics got better which is a key when you're using that kind of marker. And just seeing the progress, it just makes you feel so much better about what you're doing. Like, you're just like, oh, you know what? I can do this. I can do this. And that's that's huge. Another benefit is that you're building muscle memory. And this is so important for us as artists. This goes back to what I was talking about earlier, about how you have to know how to use your tools in order to get the vision that's in your head out. And... This is where muscle your muscles are a tool as well, right? They're the, the tool that lets you move <laughs> to, to create. And so as you build up that muscle memory, it becomes much easier for you to get what's in your head out because you become much more comfortable with the movements that you have to make and they don't require as much concentration as they did when you were first starting out. And this lets you get all that stuff that's in your head out. And it also gives you the freedom to break break rules. Once you know the rules, once your body knows how it needs to move, you can start doing things that you would not have been able to do previously. And that gives you a lot of creative freedom, but you have to build up that muscle memory first. Another thing that you're doing by putting your work out there. So you can do a 30 day project or a 365 or whatever, but if nobody sees it, you lose out on a couple of really big benefits from this project. You lose out on getting past the, the perfectionist stage, as I've already mentioned, but you also lose out on building a community. By sharing your work every day, you're inviting people in, people who like your work, and you know what? People who might even purchase from you one day. And this is particularly true for myself. When I first started my very first 100-day project, I all of a sudden people started, people who, who were following me on Instagram, who never commented, never engaged, started commenting and, engage, and engaging. Not right away. Uh, very often it was weeks into the project when all of a sudden they'd pop up and say, I have been following this since the start and I just love what you're doing or I've loved seeing the progress or I think your doodles are super cute. So you have to be patient, but it will come. Um, The second year when I did Miss Doodle and people really started to resonate with the actual character of Miss Doodle, who is basically my much more fun, much nicer, (laughs) much more free alter ego. (laughs) Um, People started to, that's when I got the first comments of you should make prints from this if you made prints from this I would buy this 
And at the time, I had zero intention of turning Miss Doodle into anything commercial. It was just something I was doing for myself. And because I was starting to realize it was bringing a lot of joy to people. But that was the first inkling that I got that, you know what, people might actually want to buy my work. And when I did the food illustration, that's when people really started to say, I would love to, to buy your work. And I actually, because I was very involved in the food blogging world, I actually used a lot of photos from food bloggers that I knew as the reference for the work that I was doing. And I had several of them who asked if they could have a copy of what I had done for them. And in some instances, I even sent them the originals. So that was, again, I still was not making any money from my art, but that was, that really, I really started to see that there was a possibility there. And that wouldn't have happened if I hadn't put my work out there. It wouldn't have happened if I hadn't um, had people start to engage with me. And it wouldn't have happened if I hadn't engaged back and really embraced what was going on. So there's a there's a big opportunity there. Let's say you already have an Etsy shop or let's say you already sell your artwork or whatever, but you're just not reaching as many people as you'd like to reach. You're not getting as many customers as you'd like to have. This is a great way to let them in. It's almost a behind the scenes what you're showing them because they're showing you, you're showing them the raw work that you're doing. Like you're, they're, this is your process. This is your process to get better. And that's very powerful. Don't ever underestimate the behind the scenes of how you get to the finished product or the sellable product. The last benefit that I'm going to mention is that you're building a body of work. At the end of the 100 days, you're going to have 100 pieces of work. And that's huge. You may not think about it that way. I didn't start to notice it till I was at the end of my second year. And all of a sudden I had 200 artist tiles <laughs> floating around and I didn't know what to do with them. And then as more people started to mention that they'd be interested in buying my work, before I started my Etsy shop at the end of 2019, I went through all the artist tiles from my previous projects. So I think at that point I had about five years for four years of projects to go through and I started pulling the ones that could be usable and I think almost everything in my Etsy shop not quite everything but a lot of the items in my Etsy shop are actually based on 100 day project mini projects so it is a great way to create a body of work that you can then monetize at some point. And let me be clear, you don't need to do this. You don't need to do the 100-day project or any kind of project a day program in order to make money. I certainly never started this with the idea to make money. I started it because I wanted to get better at creating. And because I had done that photo a day project so many years prior and knew how much how dramatically that had improved my photography I knew it could do the same for my illustration it was purely something I was doing for myself and as I mentioned it took me a couple of years before I started to realize that this could be something that I could make money with and even then I still struggled for a couple of years about whether or not I wanted to go down that road so it's certainly not something you have to do to make money but <laughs> It does create this incredible body of work that you can draw from. Um, one of the things that I realized with Miss Doodle, and I think it was in the third year of doing this project, I actually did it with an eye to potentially creating a picture book. And so the style of what I created the doodles in was very different. And I still have those, the majority of those doodles have never appeared in any artwork that I've sold because I am actually keeping them set aside for a bigger idea. So there's a lot that can come out of doing this and there's so many different benefits. I really, I really encourage you to take on something like this. And if you don't feel you can do a hundred days, just start with a 30 day. And you can search hashtags on Instagram, 30 day challenge, 30 day illustration challenge, 30 day crocheting challenge, whatever, just search. You'll find people who are doing them. Um, in January, I did one that um, an illustrator who I follow on Instagram, she ran. Uh, it was a 30 day one 
where you got a prompt list on the first day, which was really nice because you knew what you were going to be drawing. And um, you could go see what other people had drawn, compare all the different ways that people envisioned drawing a turtle. (laughs) So there's some benefits to that, but um, there's also benefits to doing it on your own. There's so many different ways you can do it, but it really is one of the best things you can do for your skills, for your creativity, for your creative eye, and for building your body of work. And I really, really do strongly recommend that you try one, even just try a seven day one. But I feel like to, to see the improvement, you have to at least do 30 days. Um, and the 100 day one, if you can get through the 100 days, you will see a massive improvement in your work. And that makes it really worth it. So what should you do? This is another one. Like, I, I, I'd like to do this, but I can't think of what I'd like to do. So I'm just going to throw some ideas at you guys. Just use these as jumping off points. You could do 100 days of photographing cars or plants or bicycles or kitchen utensils. Like, just pick something really specific. It could be 100 days of writing haikus, okay? A haiku is a very short poem. You know, you're not writing an epic poem here. You're writing a very short poem. It's not to say that writing a haiku is easy. It's not, but it's not something that you have to spend hours doing. It is something that you could put a short time limit on. It could be 100 days of crocheting blanket squares. So you might not want to complete an entire blanket (laughs) a day, but you could do a little crocheted square that you stitch together at the end of the 100 days when you've got all 100 squares. You could create them all in a gradient of a specific color, or you could create them in a rainbow or however, with the idea being that at the end, you'll sew them all together to make a blanket. But I don't know, my grandmother could have knocked off a crochet square (laughs) very quickly. So that's something that you could do really quickly. It could be 100 days of comic strips or just comics, not even a strip, just a single panel comic. That's something that you could do fairly quickly. It could be 100 days of stitching buttons or stitching zippers. Like, let's say that's something that you really struggle with. Well, let's just sew 100 of them. (laughs) Uh, It could be 100 days of writing a lyric. So maybe you're just going to work on chorus lyrics or a bridge lyric or something like that. Just get them out there. 100 days of writing flash fiction. So a flash fiction is fiction that's shorter than a short story. It's something that, you know, maybe it's just a page. It could be 100 days of creating floral collages. So there's all, there's so many things that you could do. The sky's the limit. Just think about what you'd like to get better at. This year, what I am doing is um, I did a poll on my Instagram actually to see what people would like me to do. I gave them the option of 100 days of Miss Doodle because I haven't done her for a few years, or it could be a hundred days of me learning to draw things better that I'm not very good at, like leaves, um, or a mix of the the two. And basically I had an even, it was like a third, a third, a third. So that didn't help me. But what I've decided to do is while I was cleaning out some stuff last week, I found this flow special edition magazine that I bought a couple of years ago the big book of drawing and basically it is this huge fat book with just gobs of drawing exercises in it Um, everything from people to furniture to plants with leaves (laughs) and as I started going through it I realized you know what I could do one of these exercises a day for 100 days and is something that I could do very quickly. They're not complex drawings. They're really just to get your hand moving. So that's what I'm going to do. If I run out, I'm not sure how many exercises are in the book. If I run out, I have Lisa Congdon's book on 20 ways to draw a tulip along with 44 other fabulous flowers. And I figured that I could supplement with this. And Miss Doodle might still pop up because I really like drawing her and I haven't done her for a while. But Um, I thought this would be a fun way to get better at drawing plants and leaves and flowers, which are things that, as I've mentioned, I really struggle with. So that's what I'm going to be doing. You can follow along on my Instagram. My Instagram is mh, as in Melissa Hartfield, chipmunk, (laughs) which was my nickname all through senior high um, because I have very chubby chipmunk cheeks. (laughs) So now you've just learned that about me. 
yeah, so that's where you can find me on Instagram. That's where I'm going to be sharing my 100 days. You can also use the 100 day project hashtag, which is a way to connect with other people all over the internet who are doing the project as well. The project started today. This podcast is not going to air until next Friday. But that's still time to get involved. It's still time to take part. You don't have to start on the same day one as everyone else. Um, You're only going to be out by, what, five days? (laughs) So, um, And if you do decide to take part, I would love to know what you've chosen to do. If you've already started, I would love to know what you've chosen to do. Uh, Give me a shout on Instagram and and let me know. You You can give me a shout at my personal Instagram where I'll be following along with the project or you can give me a shout on the and she looked up instagram which is at and she looked up so either way i'd love to see what you're doing um i'd love to to follow along i'd love to you know have you be part of my community be part of your community so please do let me know what you decide to do if you decide to go ahead with this and i really hope you do so that's it for this week this was a spur of the moment episode that i literally decided an hour ago I was going to record. (laughs) So I hope I was coherent. (laughs) Normally I have notes and things, but um, today I didn't. I was just like, I'm just going to go with it. I'll be back next week with a regular episode. I look forward to connecting with you all then. So in the meantime, happy creating, and I'll talk to you all next week. Thank you so much for joining us for the And She Looked Up Creative Hour. If you're looking for links or resources mentioned in this episode, you can find detailed show notes on our website at andshelookedup.com. While you're there, be sure to sign up for our newsletter for more business tips, profiles of inspiring Canadian creative women, and so much more. If you enjoyed this episode, please be sure to subscribe to the show via your podcast app of choice so you never miss an episode. We always love to hear from you, so we'd love it if you'd leave us a review through iTunes or Apple Podcasts. Drop us a note via our website at andshelookedup.com or come say hi on Instagram at andshelookedup. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.